Hi, my name is Tel Koenderink and I'm the founder and master trainer of Novulo, where we help schools, teachers and parents create a better place for gifted and talented kids. Hey, what I want to talk to you about today is executive functions. And what this basically boils down to is how can a kid have an IQ of 150 and can't get his assignments in on time? Or get it done? Or sit at his table and just get his book and his papers and his pens all together? How can it be that it takes so long? Well, this has to do with the development of the automated and executive functions. Um, what we're going to look at is brain development, but it's going to be way simplified. So please don't, you know, answer a million times like, oh, this isn't exactly correct. Um, I know it isn't. I could make this a lot more complex, but it doesn't help you. I truly believe in bringing forward the simplest ideas in a coherent way so you can understand them and then especially help you to apply them so you know what to do. That's more important than be exactly correct. And if you want to add something, please do, you know, add the, the, the correct description. But make sure that you help people move forward and do stuff. So for the purpose of this story, we're going to simplify the brain into three different areas. You see beautiful Dutch text there. Um, the reptile brain, the, pri the primal brain that evolutionaries goes way back, mostly in terms of automated responses, you know, guiding the body and stuff like that. On top of that is the mammal brain, which has short-term thinking and um, normal processing in it. And then we've got the human brain, which has a more evolved functions. Well, the basic difference we're going to talk about is conscious and unconscious thinking, which goes on between these different areas. And we're going to talk about two babies, baby number one and baby number two. And these babies are lying in their playpen, and there they see oh, Elmo. And Elmo, well, that's the high point of your life if you're like, two months old, and they see it and they want to have it. So the first baby, who is a normal baby if you can talk about that, thinks about Elmo and thinks, I want to have it, so hum, he throws his arm, ah, oh, missed, ha, throws his arm another time, missed again, and spends two weeks doing this, throwing his arm, oh, missed again. And through this process, he's practicing, and he's developing this subconscious part of his brain. This reptile brain, the automated functions, what they call proprioception, the idea of where your arm is in space in rel uh, relative to your body, based on muscular movement and stuff like that. And he gets Elmo after two weeks. He gets it, he's like, yay! So he's also learning the value of perseverance. If I keep doing it, I'll get it. But then we get the second kid. And the second kid is gifted. Of course, you can't measure it in a baby of two months old, but this one is. And he's lying there, and he sees Elmo. He's like, yeah, I would like to have that. He throws his arm. He's like, hmm, I'd like to have that, but this looks like a lot of work. So he lies there thinking and analyzing the situation. And, you know, three or four times he tries. And two days later, he's like, yeah, this is it. Bang, guts it. But he learns two lessons. One, ha, perseverance is for wuss. You can better think your way out of it. And the second thing is, he hasn't developed the automated part. He's only developed the analytical part, the part that was good for him all anyway. And that's a theme that you see throughout, that they mostly develop their ability for cognitive and analytical reasoning. <clears throat> but stuff that gets left behind are automated functions. Automated functions of the higher and the lower order. The lower order are, you know, repetitious stuff, doing physical automated stuff. When I was 11, I was measured to be at a motorical skill level of 7. Because I could do all the tests as long as I thought about them consciously. But if you distracted them, me while doing them, I would mess them up. So I had a year of motor, motor skill training with juggling and stuff like that, where I would have to juggle and say the alphabet backwards. <laughs> Saying the alphabet backwards would keep my conscious mind busy, while my unconscious, subconscious mind would have to do the juggling. So this is how I developed both sides. It's also true for the higher re level reasoning stuff. Stuff like um, 
response inhibition to be able to see yourself wanting to respond in a primal way but deciding against it but also planning coordinating organizing and a book that I could really really recommend in this is uh, smart but scattered and uh, it's by Peggy Dawson and it's all about these executive functions and how they develop and why they might not develop as well in smarter kids and what is the problem here we've got a nine-year-old sitting at his desk and it's time for his math work. So he picks up his book and he starts reading. He's like, ah, oh, I need to do this exercise. Write in your, you know, book, in your workbook. He's like, oh, workbook, write in my work. Oh, I need a workbook for that. And, he, and he's lucky because it's in the top of his bag. So he picks it up and he goes to the right page. And he's like, oh, right, oops. So now he needs a pen and now he's less lucky because now he, he wants to open his bag and get his pen. And usually this is an assignment that your conscious brain gives to your unconscious brain. You keep focusing on the math book and it's like, get a pen and it, this goes automatically. But the problem that this gifted kid has is that he cannot delegate it to the automated part because he doesn't have a strongly developed automated part. And why that is a problem is because now he needs to go into his bag. But one of the limitations of your conscious thinking brain, and I'm afraid men are worse at this than women, probably you know that, but it can only do one thing at the same time. It can only be either in the math book or, and if I'm making a computer analogy now, run the find the pen program. So now he needs to close the math program and start the find the pen program. And he opens it up and after a while he finds a pencil. Oh, no point. So now he needs to start a pencil sharpening program. So he goes to the classroom and he's distracted and then he talks to somebody and all this stuff happens. And it's like 25 minutes later before he's back and starting ready to start writing when the teacher says, time's up, next class. So frustrating. And you know why it takes so long? Because researchers have shown that to change from one context to the other, can take up to you know somewhere between two and five minutes. So that's what's happening with these kids because he needs to do everything consciously. He takes a couple of minutes to switch between these different contexts. That's why he needs to automate stuff. And you see some stuff like this happen as well when playing piano. Because <clears throat> when learning how to play the piano, you know, it's all you know nice and dandy when you're trying to play with one hand because you can consciously focus on it. But when you need to play with two hands, one of the hands needs to be delegated to the automated part while you focus on the hard hand, the most difficult hand. But what if you don't have that? And that's why you see a lot of gifted kids in sports, in music, as soon as the skills become more complex, as in tied together, they're not as good as anymore. Because when they start, everybody's like, wow, you're so cool, you're so great, because they do it consciously. But as soon as they need to automate things, stuff goes wrong because it's a lot harder. That part isn't developed for them. But it's a valuable part to develop. Because if you have got both sides, then it can move you ahead a lot faster. So what to do? Help your kid develop this automation skill. Tell this story. You know, tell about the different sides of your brain and that you need to train both of them. If they understand, they're a lot more likely to you know, move forward and help you with this. And give them exercises, you know, give them double exercises, have them do math equations with one leg in the air, you know, balancing on one leg. Or have them do, you know, spelling assignments while throwing a ball back and forth. So now they're engaging different parts of the brain, which means that they have to automate some of it. And that helps them a lot in the future, because then they can do stuff at the same time and do a lot more complex things as well. So help your kid train their reptile brain and their mammal brain and their human brain. They'll be thankful for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching this. As always, bring out the best in yourself and in each other.